Hey, how you guys doing? All right. Hey, I just uh, real quick before we get started, um, just since uh, this is the first time I've seen you guys since uh, this happened, I just wanted to publicly congratulate Chris on getting inducted into the Ring of Honor. He's been like a big brother to me since I got here, and uh, I can't think of anybody who is more deserving of that honor in this organization. And for the position he played, uh, I've never been around anybody who embodies everything that it takes to play linebacker as he did when he played. So I just wanted to say that. The time is yours. How's that carry over into the room? How's that carry over into the room? Um, I mean, just like we talked about last time, uh, I think Chris is an unbelievable role model for our players uh, and, and for me. So uh, he's, he's great when he's around those guys and, you know, uh, giving them guidance and, and being able to be a role model for them in, in the time that he's with them. We were able to take a deep dive over the bye in the first eight weeks. Since Derek has, has played a bigger role, just where, where have you seen maybe him progress the most? Um, I think just uh, his overall understanding of the position. You know, uh, Derek is, I think, getting better every week. Uh, he's a guy who uh, is a young player who played really a different position in college, okay? Played linebacker his senior year, but also played defensive end as earlier, played some defensive end last year too, right? So there's a lot of things, there are some nuances to the position uh, that I think he's, uh, he's growing and getting better every week. Uh, and I really like where, where he is right here. I think his trajectory is right where he needs to be uh, halfway through his rookie year. When you um, work on that rotation with, with him and Jalen, yep. is, is it something where you try to go series by series and kind of trim out, or is it still more sub-package based? How much do those guys need to, I guess, cross-train in case you know, there's, there's an injury and they have to be able to play the, the full three downs? I think both of them, both, both, I'd say this, both of them have played in all the packages. So, uh, and I think everybody in the room has to have an understanding of what, if you're up on game day, you gotta be able to go into the game and, and play. So I think from that standpoint, from a mental standpoint, I think uh, they're both doing a good job there. Uh, and I would say from a rep standpoint in the game, uh, it's as much a feel thing for me. There's definitely like packages where they each start in. And then kind of you get into the game and, okay, what's the flow of the game like? If somebody's getting a lot more reps than the other, then I'll probably play the other person, right? But if it works out where their packages are getting equal time, then I won't mess with them. Kind of like running back almost where you could ride hot hand as well? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Or what the offense, I guess, is probably dictating as well. Yeah, and that probably has as much to do with it as anything. How much is Ian Salone starting to get his – when they get into this – can you so, repeat the question? I'm sorry. How much more is he getting comfortable with his role here? You seem to see him making more plays and more involved. Yeah, I think um, – I definitely think he's comfortable in his role here. Uh, I think, you know, this is for him, you know, being the green dot, kind of taking a really big leadership role in our defense. You know, he came from a place that had a veteran defense, right? I mean – and New Orleans has had, you know, a really good defense and, and a veteran defense. And he comes here, and now all of a sudden he's kind of the veteran. Uh, and I think for him taking on that leadership role, uh, he's done a great job of that. I think he's great with our, with our younger players in the linebacker room and just our younger players in general on defense and with the team. I think he's done an excellent job there. So I'm, I'm very proud of the way he's attacked this season and the growth that you see in him. You mentioned uh, Derek sort of being where he needs to be midway through his rookie season. What are the data points, I guess, that you use to see if he, you know, for, for the second half, I guess, to, uh, if he would be where, where he needs to be at the end of it? How do you measure that? Uh, I think it's something, it's hard to measure. Uh, I'm trying, I'm not the smartest guy, I'm trying to think it tangibly, right? Is that a good word? Yeah. Tangible, okay. right? I mean, that's pretty good, right? <laughs> so I think it's hard to measure tangibly. I think it's something about, the way he comes to work every single day. And there's small things that happen within a play that doesn't involve getting a tackle. It's just understanding, okay, I saw this and this is how I reacted, okay? That comes with, at play in the linebacker position, time and work and reps. And when you see him start to do those things, that's where you see the growth. And then once you start to do those things, the plays will come. Like a lot of times, you know, you can make plays by, you know, see ball, get ball, but at the same time, you can also give up plays that way. And when you start to see a guy 
who is seeing what the offense is doing and then being able to react the correct way based off what, we're, what we've called in the defense that we're in, that's where you see the growth. And I think every week he's getting better with those things. Are you the type of coach that will provide cut-ups of you know, star players or Hall of Fame players for a young player to watch to emulate? And if so, I mean, do you, is there particular guys you've shown there do you feel like he, he kind of has some similarities to with his skill set? Uh, yeah, I, I would say definitely, um, especially guys currently playing in the league, okay, watching their peers and being able to make cutoffs for their peers is something that I like to do, something we've done. More of an off-season thing. Right now, we kind of got what we're doing right now in-season, all that stuff. Uh, but def definitely something um, off-season-wise that's something that I like. I, I do that on my own every off-season. I like to see the top linebackers, you know, and, and the plays that they're making, how they're playing, and then definitely being able to pass that to the players and, you know, hey, put these cutoffs on their iPads and all those types of things. Yeah, definitely. Is there I mean, a guy that you think Derek, as he grows into, you know, his, his skill set that, you know, he kind of, I don't know, mirrors isn't necessarily the right term, but, you know, is, is similar to in, in how, they're, uh, how they perform now? Yeah. Um, this is a guy who I'm biased because I really like him. I, I had a lot of success in Chicago with Nick Wachowski, okay, who went on to Oakland and made some money. Um, I, think, I think that's a guy who Derek has a very similar body, very similar skill set to Nick. Um, and I think, you know, Nick ended up being a really, th three, a really good backer for us in Chicago and, and his first year in Oakland. So I think, I think that's something, uh, that's a guy who he's similar to, you know. But I think at the end of the day, like, I like comparisons, just like you're talking about. But like, kind of every player is kind of their have has their own unique deals. And I think uh, Derek, uh, as he grows, you're going to see Derek's going to kind of uh, have his own unique style that is other guys are going to kind of try to embody. I think. Your impression of Najee Harris in that offense? <laughs> uh, really, really good back, strong, physical. Um, Reminds you of, a, of another guy who came out of the same school who's, who's playing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, he's going to be a guy that uh, uh, we got we to gotta aggressively attack this week, and we got we to gotta be outstanding in our tackling, uh, and that's going to be a big key for us. You know, he's a good back, and, and we got we to gotta swarm him, and we got to get 11 guys to the ball on every play. It's pretty hard for us to confirm to Henry. I mean, there is just we're using him in that way, too, to, to sort of give him that. Yeah, but I think similar. I mean, yeah, I guess when I compare him, I'd say similar in the sense big body, right? Um, a guy who's big and fast, uh, can beat you to the sideline, and can run through you. You know what I mean? That type of guy. And the way you have to tackle those guys are great. They both have that, that stiff arm, right, that, that both those guys have used. And I think, you know, that's something you got to handle going into the week. What's the key to preventing stiff arm? Stopping that? Um, yeah, I think. Well, no, right. Not going to posterize. I think there's a there's a technique there that's involved with the, with tackling when you get stiff arm. And then I think the key thing is, and like I talked to the backers about this today, this this isn't gonna, this can't be a solo tackle game, right? We got to get eleven guys to the ball in every single play. That's what we're going to do.